Welcome, listener. You've stumbled upon the unexpected podcast. Whether you're meant to be here or not, you might want to prepare yourself for a world of stories you won't hear anywhere else. They are, after all, quite unexpected. Fishing! It is one of mankind's oldest methods of sustaining itself. Unfortunately, it is also turned into a sick and shameful way of expressing tall tales. Many fishermen and fisherwomen have told exaggerated stories and bold-faced lies in the efforts of trying to impress their friends, families, and lovers. But... What is so relaxing about trying to catch something unknown? For the creature you may pull out from the depths of oblivion is perhaps the one trying to hook you. I bring to you now the diabolically demented tale of... Be careful what you fish for. I love it. Isn't it beautiful, Leon? Yeah, sure is, Rhonda. There's just nothing like being out on the lake. So many beautiful trees, the fresh air, the glistening water, birds singing, children laughing as they play. A slight breeze carrying the scents from the nearby meadows, soft, pillowy clouds floating overhead. Oh, I've missed this so much. Yeah. Sure is nice out. Is something wrong? Huh? No, no, I'm fine. You've hardly said ten words on the entire ride up here. Come on, I know when something is bothering you. You're not exactly subtle about it. I just feel weird being here, that's all. At the cabin? Yeah, Rhonda, I mean, this is your dad's old place. I know you thought it'd be a good idea for us to stay here for the summer after I sold my company, but doesn't feel right. Why doesn't it feel right? Well, if you can recall, your dad couldn't stand me, and everything here just reminds me of him. I mean, look, it still says Marv's cabin right above the door. Well, it was his place. And Leon, come on. It's not that he couldn't stand you, it's that he just didn't know you like I know you. Behind your soft exterior, you can sometimes be tough. I tried my best. I really did. But he was always so cold to me. Remember when we went fishing once? I really wanted to bond with him and let him know I was good enough for you. But the entire time, your dad kept telling me what a pathetic loser I was and that I didn't deserve you. (laughs) It really hurt my feelings. Daddy could be a bit harsh at times. He said the moment I was born, the doctor and my mom should have a knife fight and the winner would get to strangle me to death. Can you imagine my own mother strangling me to death? (sighs) I shudder to think. He meant well. When I went to ask him for your hand in marriage, he chased me out of the cabin with the flaming pitchfork. I still have a scar in my leg, and I still don't know how he set that thing on fire so quickly. I get it. He was being protective of his little princess. He was always like that with my high school and college boyfriends. But Leon, Daddy is gone. He was cremated and his ashes were dumped in the lake. You were there, remember? And now he left this place to me, to us. We'll make our own memories here, along with our son. Yeah, I I guess so. I can't believe next month we're going to be parents. If I'm being honest with myself, I'm almost as scared of being a father as I was of yours. Oh, stop, Leon. Eventually you have to let all of that go and grow up a bit. You're going to need to, for our family. You can start by carrying all that stuff inside, if you can handle it. Ugh, I hate this place. I really, really do. So many awful memories of Marv harassing me and belittling me. You know what? Since I'm out here alone, I finally feel free to say it. I'm glad the old coot is dead. You hear me, Marv? This world is a better place without you. 
Well, I better go grab those suitcases. Let's see. Huh. It's surprisingly dark in here with the burnt out light in the vehicle and the sun setting so quickly. Clouds are moving in. Is that the sound of thunder? Yikes! It's gonna be a stormy night. Some might even describe it as spooky. Well, I'll take one of these cases back here first. I just need to stretch a little further to grab it. I almost got it. Oh, what are you doing there, Sonny? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to startle you. What the? Who the heck are you? Name's Jim Oldman. Though most people in town just call me the crazy old man instead. Hurts my feelings, it does. Oh, of course, I did once try and marry a squirrel. Oh, besides that, though, I have a clean record. Hi, uh, Mr. Oldman. It's a, it's a pleasure to meet you. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm just a little jumpy. I, I'm not too thrilled to be back here at the cabin. Oh, yes, yes, the lake will do that to you. Always has, always will. What do you mean? Oh, well, you see, quite a few tragedies have occurred on this lake over the decades. Oh, I some even say, it's cursed. A cursed lake? <laughs> no, I've heard everything. You got some ghost fish down there or something? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't make light of what's happened out there, young man. Oh, yeah? Come on, this ought to be rich. Oh, I don't know if I should be filling your head with such tales. No. Go on. Oh, all right then. Started some time ago. No one is quite sure when exactly. But the first tragedy people recall was one unusually cold morning. Oh, back in uh, early June of 1908, when a group of school children were out on the lake. I was one of them, if you can believe I was young ones. <laughs> ah, it was the last day of school before summer break, you see. So young... So innocent. Having the time of our lives we was. And aside from the cold, it was a beautiful day to boot. Everything was going fine. Until, well, out of nowhere, our boat suddenly crashed into another boat. Carrying another group of school children. Forty-seven souls were tragically lost that day. Oh, somehow, I was able to swim to shore. Watched every single one of my classmates drown. One by one by one. I was helpless to save them. I was still only knee-high on a grasshopper, you see. I, I'm so sorry. Oh, and then in 1972, the mayor's son drowned while going for a little dip in that there lake. It was his birthday, too. Oh, such a tragic thing. Such a nice young man. Oh, I just so happened to be searching the beach for tin cans that day, and well, I saw the whole thing. I swam as fast as I could to save him, but I couldn't get to him in time. You may not believe me, but it was like the lake itself pulled him under. Oh, I never forgave myself for failing to save a child yet again. Oh, Mr. Oldman, I, I am so, so sorry. Oh, well, then, yes, the mayor. Well, he drowned himself trying to save his son. Oh, I'll never forgive myself for that one either. Oh, wow. Oh, and then the clown they hired for the birthday party. Well, he, he tried to save the mayor, but, well, he drowned too. Oh, that is so sad. Oh, yes, I felt a little bad about that one. Oh, but then a dog jumped in after, and he tried to save all of them. Luckily, the dog was okay. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, until the dog died the following year of leprosy. Holy moly! Oh, but I don't mean to talk your ear off. Well, I'll let you start your vacation here at... Uh, hey, why, this is old Marv Thompson's cabin. Ain't that right? Yeah, he, uh... He was my father-in-law. Oh, boy, how about that? Well, that right there is a whole other story. Real shame what happened to him. Wait. You know about that? Can you tell me? Rhonda will never talk about it. Oh, son, I remember it like it was yesterday. Mr. Thompson was out there on that cursed lake late one night, trying to catch old Admiral Earl. Admiral Earl? Local legend. A fish they say is 15 feet long, if you can even call him a fish. 
Some say he's hundreds of years old, coming from the sea and swimming up Dongaroot Creek, and that he may even have started the lake's curse. Oh, he pops up every now and then. School children around here sing songs about him. Oh, the old folks around here always know someone who knows someone who swears they saw him. Nobody can ever catch him, though. No photos either. Oh, but Marv sure did try. <laughs> For decades, in fact. Ended up being the last thing he ever did. So what happened exactly? Oh, I remember it just like it was yesterday. Oh, it was an unusually foggy night. Leon, uh, it's going to rain. You coming in or what? Uh, yeah, coming, Rhonda. Who the heck were you talking to? Oh, just a local. His name's Tim Oldman. Here, let me introduce you to him. Oh my gosh, he's not even here. He just disappeared into thin air. No, he didn't. He's right behind you on his bike. Sleep well, you two. Oh, this is so perfect. Just you, me, a blanket, and a couch to cuddle up on with nothing but the sound of the lake and some birds. <laughs> The fire is crackling. We're enjoying these delicious warm drinks. You with a cocktail, me and my hot chocolate. I'm here in my cozy pajamas. You have your comfy slippers on. And to think, next year there'll be three of us out here. Right, Leon? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. You, me, and, uh, and, uh... Little Marv, our baby. What is going on with you? Nothing. I I am fine. Well, all right. Something is up, but honestly, I don't have the strength to figure it out right now. I'm about to pass out, so I need to go up to bed. You coming? Actually, I uh I think I'm going to go for a little walk and just clear my head a bit. A walk? But you're always so scared of being alone by the water. What? No, I'm not. If you say so. Just don't wake me up when you come in, okay? You know how much I hate that. Scout's honor. All right. Good night. Now that Rhonda's going to bed, I'm going to do what I should have done a long time ago to prove I'm a real man. I'm going to catch Admiral Earl. Then she'll have to respect me. I better go check out her dad's study. You must have something in there I can use. Ugh, just how I remember it. Dusty, smells like a mean old man. There's a bunch of dead animals on the wall. A deer, goose. Whoa, when did he kill a dolphin? And a baby seal? Well, it doesn't matter what you have up there. You never could catch the old admiral, could you, Marv? No, you couldn't, and now you won't, because you're dead and your ashes are in that lake, you old bastard. I'm going to show you anyway. In fact, I'm going to use your own precious rod to do it. And I'm going to... Oh, look at this. A gun. And some bullets. You just left these behind. Well, if that fish really is 15 feet long, I might need some protection. Thanks, Dad. Man, so cold out here on the lake. But I like it. Makes me feel like a real man. And I'm going to catch that fish, yank it out of the water, shoot it in the brain, and prove to Rhonda and Marv that I'm good enough for her. I'll be the local hero of this town. They'll probably throw a parade and name a pie after me. Mmm, I hope it's Huckleberry. Now I'll just wait here and catch that thing. Wait, I think I got something already. Oh man, it's big. This has got to be it. The Admiral, it's him. Come on, come on. Must catch him. Just need to keep... I got you, Earl. I got you, you son of a fish. Or is it I that have you, Leon? (laughs) <laughs> oh, Leon, do you really think that you could catch me with a tiny rod and a wimpy gun? You fool. 
I am your god. Your mortal human instruments have no effect on me. You're just a giant fish. There's got to be some way to stop you. If you really want to catch me, you'll need a special kind of bait. What's that? I crave human flesh. It keeps me alive. That's why I'm immortal. So many innocents have perished at my hands. I mean fins. And now, I will feast on your flesh. No. No, Earl, don't. Earl, don't eat me. No! The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast will return after a short word from our sponsors. the next episode of Fishing Up a Bite. Joe and Mikey Earl are out on the lake on the hunt for some crappies. Ain't nothing biting today. How about you, Mikey Earl? No, me neither. Then we head to Cousin Curtis's cabin to learn about his new fish fry recipe. Cooking up some fish, gonna put it in my tummy. Mama Curtis says her baby fish fry is so yummy. Hey, what are you doing in my house? Get on out of here. Go on, get it. And finally, we meet up with world-renowned fisherman Harmon E. Fish you got to talk about his Hall of Fame career. I once killed a fish with my bare hands. Made a widow out of his old lady. After all these years, I can finally own up to it. And now, I can leave this world. I'm coming, Doris! That's all on the next episode of Fishing Up a Bite. We now return you to your tale here on the Unexpected Podcast. Leon. Leon, wake up. Don't eat me, Earl. Well, Rhonda. Why are you sleeping in my dad's study? And what the hell were you dreaming about? I dreamt I was out on the lake trying to catch Earl... Uh, Earl Hindman, Wilson from Home Improvement. I was trying, I was trying to catch his uh, uh, autograph. That's a really dumb dream. Come on, get up. I'm hungry. Let's go to the diner. Can I get some flapjacks? I don't care what you get. Ah, oh, just as I remember it. The smell of coffee and breakfast frying on the skillets. The old wallpaper and bric-a-brac on the walls. Waiters and waitresses all happy to greet you. The fish tank they never seem to clean. Oh, I love this place. Daddy took us here all the time during the summers. Wow, what a great guy. I'm going to pretend you mean that sincerely. Now come on, let's sit in the usual spot. Here it is. I found it, Leon. Now just order your flapjacks and at least pretend you're having a good time. And oh my God, is that who I think it is? Rhonda Thompson? Is that you? Larry? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Wow, you look great. You're even prettier than I remember. Oh, stop. I am not. And hey, who is this? You're Rod, right? That kid from our grade who got shingles real bad? No, Larry, no. This is my husband, Leon. Oh, right. I remember hearing about you. Sorry, you just look a little different than I expected. I do? How so? Nah, not sure. Maybe less facial hair, a little shorter or something. You're kind of pale, balding too, with a little weight around the middle. Anyway, Rhonda, I can't believe you came to town and you didn't tell me. I can't believe you're the sheriff of this little town now. Especially after all the naughty things we got up to back in the old days. It just seems like everyone adores you. Oh, shucks. Yes, you're right. I I'm just so glad to have run into you. Hey, you know what? If you're not busy later, you should come see my cabin. I built it myself. We'll have a few brews and maybe hit the lake in my new sub-bead boat. Oh, we'd love that. Huh? Aces. Here, let me just write down my number for you. Oh, don't worry, I still have it. (laughs) 
I didn't delete it from my phone. Yeah? Aw, oh, heck. I won't lie. I still remember what yours is. Oh, shoot. Uh, Rhonda, remember we have that thing tomorrow? No. What thing? That, uh, thing we were going to do. The all-day thing. What are you talking about? There's no thing. Well, if there ain't no thing, then I expect to see you two on my boat. It's going to be real fun. I got to go finish my Salisbury steak, but I'll see you two later. We can't wait. What a great guy. Ooh, a new boat. How interesting. Maybe he'll show us his dinghy, too. Oh, stop. Larry's just an old friend. One that you had sexual relations with for five years. Why is it always like this with you? He's just a friend who I happened to sleep with a few times. And yes, I innocently called you his name once or twice on accident. But you and I are married. Remember? I just want some flappies and not think about him anymore. Fine. Then order your flappies. Here comes the waiter right now. Hmm. I don't remember this waiter. He looks drunk. Leon, it's you. I've been looking all over for you. Crazy old man. I I mean, Tim, what the heck are you doing here? I know what you aim to do. I came to warn you. About what? Listen closely. Very closely. You're doomed if you don't. What the hell is going on here? You must be careful. Uh, What you fish for. Oh my god! I... I think he's... dead! You're right. He is. What did he say to you? Be careful what you fish for. Your boat sure is fast. I guess that's why they call it a (laughs) speedboat. Wow. I forgot how funny you are, Larry. Hey, Leon. You need some help unbuckling those life preservers? Uh, Yeah, maybe. There we go, buddy. Thanks, Larry. Well, what do you say we get comfortable and have a few beers? I brew them myself. I call them, get this... Larry's Lake Time Beer. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot how creative you are, Larry. I'll just grab a few beers out of the cooler here. Now, I know you can't have one, Rhonda, as you're with child. So here's some alcohol-free sparkling wine I also made. Oh, wow. A toast to friends. To friends. To friends. Mmm, this is delicious. I don't think I've ever put anything this good in my mouth. What? Boy, having the three of us here together, it's just really special, isn't it? If you really want to touch me, you'll need a special kind of bait. Special kind of bait. Special kind of bait. Special, 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 special. Real special. Real special. That's it! I can't stand it. Huh? What can't you stand? I... That's it. I can't stand being out here looking at this beautiful lake and not be out there fishing. What are you talking about? You hated fishing the one time you went with my dad. No, Rhonda. I mean, to be frank, I I, I had a life before you. I used to fish all the time as a kid, and now I'd like to fish again. My way. I'm thinking late tonight. What do you say, Larry? Leon, 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 you're finally speaking my language. You and me out on the lake tonight, just the guys, it sure will be special. Yeah, real special. Real, real special. Why do you keep saying that? Real special. I'll see you out there, friend. You know, Leon, I'm surprised you wanted to come out here and do some midnight fishing. I actually thought you didn't like me. Oh, Larry. Any friend of Rhonda's is a friend of mine. Well, great. 
I hope you two come out here every single summer from now on. Maybe even on weekends. We'd absolutely love that. We're all going to be such good friends. In the meantime, I'm thinking before too long, we should actually catch something out here. Oh, I'm planning on it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to catch something real big. You mean like salmon? Or rainbow trout? Perhaps a fat walleye? Or a muskie? No. Something bigger. Something that no one in this town could catch. Not even you. What are you talking about, Leon? Admiral Earl. You ever heard of him? Because I'm going to be the one to catch him. Admiral Earl? That's just a kid's tale, Leon. Don't tell me you actually believe that nonsense. I know he's real. I've seen him, Larry. What? When? Last night. In my dream. Okay, you're talking crazy now, Leon. And besides, even if he was real, you sure as heck wouldn't be the one to catch him. Oh yeah? Why is that? Well, you're just not enough of a man. I think Rhonda made that perfectly clear today. I beg to differ. And that's because I brought something that'll catch him. I call it a gun. Leon? Friend? Put that down. You don't even know how to use one of those things. Sorry, Larry. You're just in the wrong place at the wrong time in the wrong boat. You see, I need some special bait to catch him. And that's where you're going to come in, because the old admiral has a taste for flesh, you see. Have you gone bananas? That's it. Leon, you're under arrest. Let me just get my pistol here. Put your gun down, Larry. Why should I? I actually know how to use one of these things, unlike you. I'm warning you. No, I'm warning you. You and your filthy paws that have been all over my wife. That was years ago, Leon. I've seen the way you look at her. You eye her up as if she was one of your Salisbury steaks. But she's not yours anymore. She's mine, and she always will be. And you know why? Because I'm a man. I am a real man, and you are a dead man. Leon, don't. Where are those guys? I'm starting to get a little worried. Out there, all alone on the lake. So misty and cold. On such a quiet night where you can hear the crickets and loons as if they were right beside you. And it's dark, too. Dark as ink. Or a black hole, maybe. Well, I guess I'll make a sandwich to make these pregnancy cravings go away. Did we forget to buy mustard? Oh no! Leon! Hook, line, sinker. And by that, I mean I'm going to attach this hook to your mouth with a line and toss you overboard so you'll sink. <laughs> Come on up, Earl. I know you're there. And I know you're hungry. Come on, don't make me wait, you son of a gun. Huh! I knew it! Earl wants a snack! Aha! I got you! And now I'm gonna shoot you with. Wait. Marv? That's right. It's me, Marv. Your father in law. You didn't really believe in a 15-foot fish that's hundreds of years old, did you? You really must be as stupid as Rhonda says. This can't be happening. You worthless pile of worms. You aren't good enough for my daughter. You never were. You're no man. I bet Rhonda's child is some other man's baby. Take that back. Make me, wuss. I will make you with some hot lead. (laughs) You just tried to shoot a corpse. You somehow keep getting dumber and dumber right up to the moment of your own death. 
No, Marv, no, stop, Marv, no, get away from me. Time to go deep dive fishing. You're coming with me. Woo! No! No! Oh, my. Oh. Leon! Larry! Are you guys okay? Hello? I don't think they can hear me. Because they must be dead. Looks like Daddy is still looking out after his little princess after all. <laughs> I finally got rid of Larry ten years after he broke my heart and cheated on me with my cousin. Daddy really didn't like him. And then there's Leon. Oh, poor, sweet, stupid Leon. Father of my child, did you really think we were going to spend the rest of our lives with you? I didn't care that you weren't a real man. It was almost charming in a way, but still pathetic. I just cared about your money, which is exactly why I got you to sell your Fortune 500 company. You're of no use to me anymore. All you are now is fish food. Thanks, Daddy. Like the stories you hear on The Unexpected? Consider sharing our show with family and friends, along with any strangers you come across. Provide a little something unexpected to someone else's day. You can find and subscribe to our show on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. We're on social media, on Unexpected Show on Twitter, and the Unexpected Podcast on Facebook. You can also find out what we're up to on our website, www.theunexpectedpodcast.com. Thank you for listening. Now let's get back to our bone-chilling tale. Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly had a sinking feeling that wasn't going to turn out well. Poor Leon, if only he'd known what kind of a catch he really had in his wife, he could have thrown her back. And if he'd only listened to that stranger's dire warnings. After all, they say you can give a man a fish and feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he could be in for the scare of a lifetime. The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast is written, produced, and directed by Andrew Socek and Eric Bergstrom. Each story is somehow a work of fiction, and with the exception of public figures like Tony Danza, any resemblance to persons living or dead is coincidental and unexpected. Unexpected.